Hi, good morning. My name is Arif. I'm a final year Bachelor of Computer Science student at University Technology Mara or UITM, majoring in Data Communication and Networking. So I've submitted my thesis to the faculty last month and I'm glad to share with you that my project was recommended for the 2021 IEEE FYP Award. So thank you for that. Hence, this video is created to briefly describe the nature of my final year project. Recently, I've completed a feasibility study of vehicular ad hoc networks or VANETs. It is a fairly new kind of intelligent transportation system using wireless technology. In a vehicular ad hoc network, road vehicles are equipped with onboard units and sensors to collect useful information about its surroundings. The collected data is then used to identify situations such as traffic congestions, accidents, unsuitable weather conditions, and so on. Therefore, the driver of the vehicle is notified of route suggestions that would decrease travel times. The information collected from the onboard units are then shared wirelessly to other vehicles and roadside infrastructure, all without the need for user intervention. So basically, this system is something like Waze, but it is faster and automated. Because of that, vehicular ad hoc networks could also improve the safety of road users by making the drivers focus more on driving instead of fiddling with their phones for navigation. Roadside units or RSUs on the other hand, they are considered as the backbone of the vehicular ad hoc network. They behave like Wi-Fi or cellular towers which can serve a larger area of effect to ensure that critical traffic information is relayed to as many road users as possible. With the help of roadside units, a motorist that plans to travel using the Federal Highway will be notified upfront about its traffic conditions in real time. Not only that, they can also be informed with personalized suggestions to stop by petrol stations or to refuel and buy refreshments. Overall, road users are able to make informed decisions so that they can commute quickly and safely to their destinations. The Vanet system, however, has its own shortcomings. Since the vehicular nodes communicate wirelessly with each other, the radio signals are prone to signal degradation over long distances and solid objects such as buildings. Not to mention the effectiveness of the system is also affected by vehicle speed and density. Therefore, it is crucial that a large-scale telecommunication system such as Vanet is tested properly to minimize performance hiccups in the long run. One of the most important aspects that we should consider is where and how do we deploy these wireless nodes. Thankfully, with the help of open source computer software, we are able to quickly and accurately simulate these network environments before they are implemented in the real world. Some of the tools that I use to conduct my studies is the open source network simulator called Omnet++, Veins, which is a framework for wireless network integration and support, and Sumo, a mobility, vehicular mobility simulation framework. I've also imported a 4.2 km section of the Federal Highway using OpenStreetMap for the simulations. Google Street View also helped me to identify the possible locations for the installation of the wireless roadside units. In my research paper, I have outlined a placement guideline to identify the best placement of the RSUs for a realistic scenario of the Federal Highway. The key factors that dictate the best RSU placement are, firstly, the RSU must have line of sight visibility to the vehicles. Secondly, the RSU antenna must be high enough from, from the ground to minimize interference. And the unit must be installed at a place with reliable power source and network connectivity to operate properly. I've also conducted multiple sets of experiments aimed to evaluate the overall performance of the wireless network. Based on my findings, I have discovered an increase of up to 25% wireless packets that are lost during transmission when the signal is negated uh, from nearby solid objects and up to 4% loss when the RSU antenna is not operating at its normal power level. Higher vehicle speeds also affect the network throughput by 60%. So what does this mean for our community? With the integration of a vehicular ad hoc network in the Clown Valley, the local government can effectively monitor and regulate road traffic to decrease congestions. Highway companies are able to inform us, road users, of upcoming road maintenance schedules. This will allow us to make better plans 
to decrease travel times and transportation costs. Which brings me to my next point. In terms of sustainability, a study in 2015 found that Malaysia's transport sector is responsible for the emission of a whopping 61.4 million carbon dioxide gases due to our reliance of private motor vehicles. Now we have almost 30 million vehicles on the road today. Imagine that if we implement vehicle ad hoc networks at scale, we are able to decrease our emissions by even 20% we are looking at a respectable 12.28 million tons of carbon dioxide not released into the environment. Not only that, we could also promote energy efficient transportation by reducing our overall fossil fuel consumption. Since there are around 17 million registered vehicles as of 2020, even saving as little as 20 ringgit per vehicle could net us roughly 340 million ringgit worth of energy savings. This is in line with one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that is to quote, make cities and human settlements safe, inclusive, resilient and sustainable. Overall, I believe that the findings of my research will contribute to a realistic and feasible implementation of an intelligent transportation system in the Klang Valley. I also believe that vehicular ad hoc networks could pave the way for autonomous driving in the future for faster and safer transportation. Feel free to reach me if you are interested to learn more about my research in the vehicular ad hoc networks. If you enjoyed my video, give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching. Have a good day.